Good day, One World Fly Squad. Welcome back to another Thursday trip report. I'm at Melbourne Telemarine Terminal 2, the international terminal. Today I'm going to fly China Airlines A350 from here to Taipei and then onwards to Hong Kong. Uh, for this video in particular, I'm going to cover the first leg to Taipei. Now, without further ado, let's go check in with China Airlines. Melbourne Airport is quite hustling and bustling at the moment. Within the next few hours, you've got my flight to Taipei as well as Emirates A380 to Dubai and Qatar 777 to Doha. There are quite a few check-in counters open for China Airlines, but the process do take a while. For myself, it took 5 minutes, so that resulted in a very long queue. Fortunately for myself, I've got Sky Priority. That came with my Sky Team Elite Plus status, so I could skip the queue here. And then I headed straight to security and immigration. With most security machines open, the security didn't take long. I rarely do juicy free shopping, but I went to the eShop shop to get my biological daddy some souvenirs. Sky Team nor any of their members operate a lounge at Melbourne Airport. So with my China Airlines boarding pass, today I'm granted access to the third party lounge, Mahaba. It's located upstairs, right opposite the Qantas International First Lounge. Quite a few airlines, including China Southern, Air China, Qatar Airways and Bamboo Airways use this lounge. As I mentioned earlier, it is the peak hour at Melbourne International, so the lounge is quite busy as well. You wouldn't really have any trouble looking for a seat, but it might not be your favourite seat. For instance, all the seats by the windows have been taken. The Mahaba Lounge might not be a very fancy one, but their buffet is quite impressive. For hot food, they've got curry, fried noodles, pasta, Asian veggies and beef goulash. Upon entering the lounge, I was also given a voucher for a wonton noodle soup. For beverages, they've got coffee, tea, juice, soft drinks, spirits, wines and beers. I just found a quiet corner in the lounge to eat my fried noodles. I'm not eating too much because later we're going to have dinner on board. So the FMB is really good here except for the oranges, literally. It is super sour. So in the Mahaba, they've got three shower rooms, one in the male bathroom, one in the female, and also a large one which is unisex and disabled friendly. So the ones in the female and male bathrooms are really tiny. There's also no toilet inside. The unisex slash disabled friendly has a toilet. You can grab towels and the shower gel from the reception. Before long, it's time to board our plane to Taipei. I'm on the escalator from the lounge floor to the gate floor, and we've got this great view of this Emirates A380. The gate lounge area is really crowded, and China Airlines has a specific seating zone for Sky Priority passengers. Thank you. Welcome on board China Airlines A350-900. Economy class is laid out in a 333 configuration. My seat today 63A, the very last row, in the forward economy cabin. Seat features, there's no cut hook. There's a TV with a USB port and headphone jack. Here you can store your literature and inside you'll find a safety card and vomit bag. Tray table can be folded in half and moved back and forth. Here's a netted seat pocket so you can see through the stuff you've put inside. Leg room is really decent, about 33 inches. Down here a universal power socket which you'll have to share with your neighbour. Finally every seat has a soft adjustable headrest. Overall, a really solid product, but there's no double seat back padding, and this tiny entertainment box can be a bit annoying. During the rather long boarding process, the cabin crew confirmed my special meal order. They also gave out earphones, and on request, gave out slippers. I was quite surprised they had slippers in economy. The cabin crew were also really proactive in helping passengers with their cabin baggage. Look at the carpet on board China Airlines A350. It's really fancy. Dear passengers, this is cabin manager Frank speaking. Welcome aboard Sky Team member China Airlines and the Qantas Airways kosher fly CI058 from Melbourne to Taipei. Our flight time will be 9 hours. Now please pay attention to the following demonstration. Thank you for your cooperation. The safety video is bilingual, in Mandarin and English. Passenger announcements by the cabin crew are made in English, Mandarin and Taiwanese Hokkien.
The moon is really bright tonight, and throughout the flight we're going to be able to see the A350 wing and the clouds clearly. Now that we're in the air, I'll quickly go through the in-flight entertainment. For the system, you can choose English, traditional Chinese or Japanese. You've got a great variety of movies to choose from, including Hong Kong movies, Korean and Hollywood. On the TV, you can also check your connecting flight information and browse through the duty-free shopping catalogue. There's also of course flight map available, however there's no external cameras on board. Internet access is available at a cost. In-flight service shortly began after takeoff. The crew began with a beverage service. They basically walked around the cabin with a tray full of water, OJ and apple juice. I just reclined my seat and enjoying my OJ. The recline is really generous and the reason I like the back row is that I can recline throughout the flight including during the meal service because I'm not disturbing anyone behind but of course during takeoff and landing I have to sit back upright. After a while the cabin crew came to me with my vegan meal order. This is a full dinner service. Regular meal service will commence shortly. Now let's unwrap everything. For starter, we've got the salad on the right and dessert is a fruit pudding. There's a cup on the far right for the coffee and tea later. For main course, we've got a capsicum or bell pepper tomato pasta. On the side, we've got bread and vegan butter. For the salad, you've got this vinegar dressing. Cutlery is plastic and disposable and every meal comes with a small bottle of water. This is a rather disappointing meal. Pasta tastes okay, but the pasta temperature was inconsistent throughout. I reckon the cabin crew didn't heat it up properly. Some pasta was actually cold. I just sucked it up because I didn't want to bother the crew during the regular meal service. They're going to be so busy. I do appreciate how they provide you with a bottle of water for this overnight flight. The crew have now commenced the regular meal service. Your options are chicken rice or seafood pasta. And I'm happy to announce that up to my row, which is the last in the forward economy cabin, they've still got both selections left. For beverages, you can choose wine, coffee, tea, and juices. The cabin crew service is really fast and efficient on this flight. Having flown on many A350 beforehand, they definitely have enough crew on board. On the other hand, Cathay Pacific is severely understaffed a meal service could take two hours. Just have a look at how many cabin crew I've got in this shot. In less than one hour and 30 minutes after takeoff, the cabin crew have finished the service and lights have been deemed for people to sleep. The quick service maximizes the amount of sleep you get on board. Hello there, welcome on board China Airlines A350 Economy Lavatory. I don't know if you can hear it, but they're literally playing some traditional Chinese music in the background, which is pretty cool. So the lavatory is really sleek and clean, space is quite good, when I sit down I've still got decent room. You've got some fade mountain painting there, paper cups if you want to brush your teeth or rinse your mouth. Finally we've got coat hook, just one, better than none. You've also got premium hand soap, hand cream and perfume. Just look at how bright outside it is. The video doesn't do justice, so I've got some photos here. If you haven't already, do check out my Instagram. I post live stories as I fly. We're currently flying over the western part of Queensland, almost crossing the border with Northern Territory. We've got about seven hours left to our journey, and the lights have been completely deemed. So everybody got over four and a half hours of sleep. With about two and a half hour left, the cabin crew have slightly and slowly switching on the lights again. They're doing the second meal service quite early. It's now 3.53am in Melbourne, Australia, or 1.53 in Taipei. Within the next 10 minutes, the cabin crew came to me with my vegan meal order. Just like dinner, it's a full meal. So we've got the same dessert of fruit pudding, a box of sultanas, and a small cup for coffee and tea later. Bread and butter again. For the main, it's red beans, tomato, Asian veggie, and something that looks and tastes like an egg, but it's not. I can't tell you what it is. It's not tofu, I think, but it's really delicious. A much better meal than dinner. Because it seems like a lot of airlines, including United and Qantas, do pasta for the vegan meal orders. And here's a quick peek of the box of sultanas. Regular breakfast service begins shortly. Your options are pork noodles or chicken and egg. We're now flying over the south of Taiwan, commencing our descent shortly. 
Good morning, dear passengers. This is Kevin Ku speaking from Quebec. We will start to descend a few minutes. Please return to your seat and make sure that your seatbelt is fastened. Let's go and take out in Taiwan with a warm temperature of 27 degrees Celsius, 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's the point here over time at 4.30 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning. Take a game for five with China Airlines. They're currently playing a custom video for entering Taiwan. We're now flying over the middle parts of Taiwan and we're getting really close to Taipei. So let's quickly conclude this trip port right here, right now. Our journey today starts at Melbourne Terminal 2. Check-in is quite busy, so do get there a bit early if you're flying China Airlines. The lounge that they use at Melbourne Airport is Mahaba. It's got great food selection and great view over the tarmac. But it does get quite busy and the shower rooms are quite basic. At the boarding gate lounge, they've got a dedicated zone for Sky Priority passengers, which is really cool. And once on board, a friendly welcome from the cabin crew. They were also really proactive in helping passengers with their cabin baggage. And they also started their service pretty much right away, like giving out earphones and slippers. They don't give out amenity kits in economy, but I'm sure you can ask for most items, including slippers, of course. Now moving on to the seats, our economy seat is quite comfortable, very very good recline, but there is no double seat back padding, and on the right hand side, window seat, you've got a small entertainment box. And speaking of entertainment, there's quite a lot of things to watch, you won't get bored. It's a shame though that they don't have external cameras on board. The only thing that I would complain about this flight is that my food was a bit cold. That being said, China Airlines do offer a very generous portion from Melbourne to Taipei, and the breakfast was delicious. Now for your information, flying between Melbourne and Taipei is going to cost you 1140 Australian dollars. About the same if you're connecting onwards to Japan, $100 cheaper if Korea, or $200 cheaper if you're going to Hong Kong or Bangkok. So that's it for the conclusion today, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so, and click that bell button next to it, because I upload a trip report like this one every week, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Now please enjoy the approach and landing into Taoyuan Airport, and then after that, I'm going to connect onwards to Hong Kong, so stay tuned for that trip report which I'm going to upload soon. And I'll do a Q&A after getting off the plane. Please enjoy, bye bye.
G'day one what fly squad, welcome back to another q and I've got Lily here. So today I've got quite a few questions to go through. Let me put you down. Bye bye. So, question one, have you solved your accommodation problems in Adelaide? Thanks for asking. So earlier this year, uh, we didn't have power supply because something went wrong underground in our front yard. So it was a big project to get it back restored. Fortunately, it's been solved um, and uh, we're not getting kicked out. Also, we just got our contract renewed. We're, we're here for another 12 months, so I'm here to stay. And I was actually afraid that the, the landlord's gonna increase the rent by quite a bit because obviously rental prices in Australia, including Adelaide, but fortunately, it's just a uh, $40 increase across four housemates, so $10 each per week, and it's affordable, doable. Next question, what does the future hold for Jaden? Uh, lots of travel for now, staying in Adelaide. <laughs> and what does the future hold for air travel industry, technology and aircraft types? Well, I suppose lighter aircraft, more fuel efficient, uh, supersonic is coming back, which is exciting. And the biggest challenge for airlines currently? Quite a few things, I suppose. Um, Obviously, rising cost in many ways, including fuel, um, which you're gonna obviously pass that on to the customers and when customers see higher ticket price, they're gonna blame the airlines. Um, what else? Um, Boeing and Airbus delays so that they can't relaunch many, many routes and also labor short, uh, shortages, including cafe. Yeah, they're really struggling to reopen routes, I see, including Hong Kong's Adelaide. I've been waiting for that forever. Which of your videos are you the most proud of? Interesting question. Um, I would say definitely one of, um, definitely the Malaysia Airlines video, which has got the most views, almost 1 million. And uh, also a big shout out to the cabin crew on that flight who showed me the first class on board and that really attracted so 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 many views what else am i proud of um i don't know maybe not particular videos but achievements let's say um whenever i get recognized by the cabin crew or passengers i feel like you know i feel great not because people recognize me but the fact that people know me from watching my videos because they watch my videos that you know, they actually care what I upload on YouTube. What's the one small detail you notice on flights that others don't? Um, I would say quite a few things, including double seat back padding, um, especially on long haul flights, having that double seat back padding, which is, you know, you, you know, you have your seat here, usually double means there's another layer here. And having that, it's so good for your back, especially when you recline, uh, you feel less pressure on your back, so get a better sleep. What else do people maybe not notice? Headrest. I like using the headrest on long flights as well. Helps you sleep a lot. I was going to say cut hooks, but because of me, people are starting to notice now. Any plans to try out Bonds app? I've already uploaded that video not too long ago, so do check it out. I'll have it in the description down below have you heard of about have you heard about the scooter mechanical issue and diversion to Adelaide absolutely and I was away that time actually I think in Noosa or Mackay so I didn't go to the airport to see that but yeah it's interesting because um Adelaide do get a lot of diversion obviously always for a bad reason but you know when you see it in Adelaide a big plane you'll be like wow I remember one time it was late June 2018 before my Cathay flight from Adelaide to Hong Kong. QF2 made a uh, landing in Adelaide from Singapore to Sydney. And you know, when I saw that plane, I was like, wow, oh my God, A380 in Adelaide. And then literally had a, a mood swing because uh, I went to the gate and I saw that the paramedics pulled out a dead body. Yeah, someone died on board, which is really, really sad. Really, really sad. What planes would you like to see uh, come to Adelaide? Definitely 
the ones that feel here pre-COVID, like Cafe and China Southern, I think when those two come back, they're going to drive down the prices from Adelaide. What else would I like to see? And let's be a bit more realistic. What would I like to see and possibly possible? Garuda maybe from here to Bali. Um, United or ANA from America and uh, Japan. Like United fly to Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney. So why not a cheeky 787 to Adelaide? ANA flies to Perth, so why not Adelaide? <laughs> Where do you book your flights? So a few channels, official websites obviously. Sometimes go to Gate. It's a slightly more dodgy website, but sometimes it could be a lot cheaper, although not flexible at all, because if you need to change or cancel, they charge you a lot of admin fees on top of what airlines are charging. Um, Expedia sometimes, I do like Expedia and Trip.com because you earn Expedia and Trip.com points, which you can redeem for in the future. And a good thing is that usually when you change or cancel with Expedia or Trip.com, they don't charge, but they just pass on the fee that the airline, the airlines uh, charge you anyways. Um, and the good thing is usually they're as good or even better than the airlines when it comes to customer support. What's your favourite thing to do in Hong Kong? I love going back to Hong Kong. Like I was just there for five days and literally it wasn't enough, even though I go back quite often. I like going to the theme parks. I like going to the outback, like the beaches um, and just walking around Hong Kong Island. Like it's, it's so busy, but it's chaotic in a nice way. What do you like to live? Uh, where do you like to live? Where do you like to live Hong Kong or anywhere else like? you mean if I want to live in Hong Kong or anywhere else? Um, I don't mind my current situation actually, where I'm mostly based in Adelaide, but I go to Hong Kong very often. Do you go on dates in the cities that you visit? Used to, not anymore. Uh, Griffin is a new subscriber and follower. He's asking that if I'm traveling for work or just flying for the sake of videos. So I don't have like a real job. What I do is YouTube and that enables me to fly a lot because obviously uh, my YouTube is about flying, literally. Uh, but also I don't think that I fly for the sake of the videos. So let's say, or oh, there's a new airline or new inaugural flight. I won't go beyond my way to catch that flight. Bonza, for example, I did because they invited me. Like it doesn't cost me. Well, I did have to fly to Melbourne, but that's quite cheap. Um, but let's say there's a inaugural in Asia or North America, I'm not going to give a damn. Um, and I only fly to places really that I want to go. For example, uh, next week I'm going to Queenstown in New Zealand because I really want to go. Not because I want to fly Virgin 737 there. Um, what else am I, where else am I going? Um, um, in July I'm going to Hanoi also because I went there a few years ago and I really want to go back, it's so beautiful there. So by doing so, it allows me to fly on different airlines. For example, to Hanoi, I'm going to fly Cafe A321neo in economy, which I've not covered before on my channel, and then Vietnam Airlines to Australia, which I've not done, which I've not done before. So it's new content and uh, it, might, it might look like I do it for the sake of the video, but every time I travel, I stay there for a few days because I want to stay there. And that's my main purpose as well. Rachel is flying to Tasmania from Brisbane in a few weeks and she uh, wants advice about um, easing her mind about flying. So really there's nothing to, you know, be scared about flying is amazing. Uh, the physics behind is unbelievable. Um, if you're scared, make sure you keep yourself busy, like maybe read a book, watch some Netflix, talk talk with your friends or family or neighbour. Uh, just keep yourself busy, forget that you're on a plane, eat something, drink something, not too much alcohol though. Um, yeah. Oh, so that's it for the Q&A today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye.
Again guys, thank you so much for watching, and a big shout out to my Patreon members and PayPal me supporters for their continuous support to my channel. See you next week when I upload another video, bye bye. Good morning, dear passengers. This is Kevin Kuh speaking from Quebec. We will start to descend a few minutes. Please return to your seat. A bunch of the juicy belt is present. Let's go to Gaudi, Taipei, with a warm temperature of 27.